Okay, it's robot time with the Druid, and I'm going to show you a design I came up with uh, that will give you a compact, stable, full-featured uh, little NXT 2.0 Mindstorms robot that you can do a lot of different things with. So just to give you an overview of the chassis and what we're going to be building, you're going to end up with something like this, and then you can add parts to it. I'll show you an overview of that if you want to build that, or you can put whatever you want on it. You can also put the ultrasonic sensor on the servo, or you can run it just right simple to the thing. But this is the basic chassis, which includes a bumper, which is pretty essential when you're doing this kind of robotic stuff. And just to give you a quick overview of how it opens up, and grab the gray part and separate it from the white part, and it tilts up. Okay, and there is a touch sensor hidden inside. That also uh, will help you when you're cabling because you can tuck some cables in there because they give you uh, some super long cables for these things. When you're building little compact robots, they end up uh, covered in a swarm of cables. But that's the overview of the little explorer. Here we've got about 13 parts, I believe. We've got uh, the servo motor. We've got two long blue connectors. We've got two of the splined blue connectors. We've got a short collar, a long collar, a tire, and a wheel, and an axle that has an end on it. Okay. And two 13 beams. Making a lot of mirror parts, right? These are only going to go together one way. You've got a spline part that goes in here, and you've got a part that you want to have go halfway through each way there. One hole back. No big deal there, right? And then what you're trying to do, see, is you got these little bits right here, and you want this to line up so that this will go right over that axle hole, which I think is very interesting that that geometry, somebody at the Lego factory figured all of this stuff out. So, you want to make a mirror image of this. Hmm? You slip the old wheel axle assembly. You notice that you've got a short collar in there as a spacer so it doesn't rub. Alright, you see that. Okay. And then this is just really to secure it. And you can tell if it's a good fit because it will keep rolling from inertia and then you know you got something. Okay. So there's your drive assemblies. So, I guess one of the reasons I thought that this is kind of an elegant design or just an interesting design is that there's so few parts and it's uh, it's very sturdy, very compact. Let me show you. It goes together really fast. There's basically five modules. You're going to have two mirrored drive units, which I think you've seen in detail. There's a little frame for securing the brick, the intelligent brick, and that goes on first. You notice how it has two little swivel pegs? Okay, see how that goes? So that goes right in the front hole of each motor. But before you put the second one on, this is a little brace that goes on the bottom, and it also gives you a place to mount the touch sensor. So, as you're putting this together, sometimes you have to do this with these Lego things. You have to kind of get everything to go together at the same time. And that traps that. Now you can see that's hinged. That's going to come in handy later. You'll see why. And here's the little caster assembly with a brace that stiffens the whole back. Okay, and once that goes on, you have basically finished assembling the whole rope. It's that few parts and that simple. There you go. And you see how that flexes a little bit? Once this frame is in there, that stops the flexing. You're going to have flexing because it's plastic. Okay, but the idea behind this design is to minimize flexing, minimize parts, maximize ground clearance, and keep everything as low as possible for a good center gravity. 
And now I'll show you how the brick goes on there. Okay, that's no big deal. It snaps right on. And so now you've got a rover that can pivot rapidly. Even on this slippery table, the wheel still turns, but on carpet or something, the wheel turns much better. And then, if you want to take a look inside and do something, you just open it up like that. And I think that's pretty good. Okay. And that's where you can start with uh, the other parts that need to go on it. So, as you can see, I've got this little deal there. You may be like, hmm, what's that for? Well, that's where a touch sensor will go. A touch sensor will go right in here, like this. Okay, and what's that going to do? Huh? How's that going to get anywhere or touch anything? Well, I'm going to have to put on some other parts first. But here's the touch sensor up front. And now, uh, you can imagine, even as rudimentary as this is, it wouldn't be hard to put something on there if it was very simple to get that. But here's a little bit more complicated part. And that goes on. First, you want to put the uh, this part on. Okay, I want to show you where it goes so you can see real well. Okay. Just going to snap right in there like that. If you come around on this side, you see how it's it pivots. It's very easy to put on and off. It doesn't do a whole lot of bracing. That's why I've got it braced with the frame. Okay, but now you've got a little basher bar, which could be handy. And but it's not going to stop you. If you run dead into something, you'll just grind out the servos. So here's these little black parts here that accept the splined axles. And here's the little bumper that has some little trapped axles in it with short collars. The purpose of that is you can see how far they go forward and how far they're able to travel back. There's a reason for that. Insert the little spline shaft into the nose of your touch deal and you slip that over in the hole where it wants to go and it's as simple as pressing this whole bumper assembly right onto these black parts, just like that. Now it's like a space bar on your typewriter. No matter what edge of the space bar you hit, you're still going to actuate the switch. Now at this point, you have a bumper car. It's ready to rock. Okay, I'm going to give you a overview and a quick build on an extending pincher arm. Okay, now, as you can see, the servo only really needs to go one quarter of a turn to fully retract and fully extend the arm. So it's a very fast action. And it's also made so that this can just keep cranking around and around. So you, if you're remote controlling it, it makes it easy because there's no easy way to configure your action motor when you're remote controlling. You just can hit the space bar and it does its deal. So as you can see it's pretty simple and you could add as many of these as you can but you'll find out that it gets pretty droopy and puts a lot of load on the mount point further away it gets. So if you grab something try and pick it up this seems to be a pretty practical distance and if you just want to annoy somebody and run up and pinch them that works pretty good too. Because the ultrasonic sensor can be set to about 10, 12 inches, and it'll trigger it. So here's the pincer arm unattached. Okay, these would be the two mount points for here. Okay, this is the drive that goes on here, centered in there, and the basic action is very simple. Now I made this a diamond because if you, you'll find out that by changing the lengths of these you get different amounts of grabbing force and grabbing power. So, And also you can play around with how you mount it and stuff, but this is the simplest way I could come up with of mounting it. And as you can see, all it is is beams of the same size. You stick a couple of these on there as the pincers, one in the middle, one in each end, like that. When you get to the end here, you're going to need 
an arm that's able to activate it. Okay, and that's what that part is right there. And then you're going to need another blue pen so that you can mount it. Snaps on here and here. Well, let's get them to go at the same time, shall we? That's one of the fun things about Legos is you got to get them to go at the same time. Uh, and then this goes here, and that goes there. So if you look at this video when you're building it, it'll help you if you can't figure it out on your own. But that's the action of it. Back to minimalist thinking in terms of how few connectors can you use to get the job done. Where do you do want to sense the light? Well, in this case, we're looking at ambient light in the room. So let's make it point straight up. And what's this for? Well, this is to both guide the robot using a simple program where it backs up and pivots and avoids an obstacle. Or in a dark room, it can be used as an alarm robot so that anything that gets close to it activates the servo. Very minimalistic and snaps right on. Get in there and see it. It just snaps right onto the brick. So once again, the brick is now part of the chassis. The whole thing is got as few parts as possible. And then, of course, the arm can just snap on the other side. And there's a lot of different ways to mount this arm. If you mount it this way for grabbing, then you're avoiding any kind of flexing force that's going to want to make it come apart. That's why it's got this orientation for mounting for this particular arm. But if you wanted to run the ultrasonic back and forth as a scanner, you can mount it sideways, and all you have to do is make a simple bar, similar to the brush bar, that goes up here. And then this can go across it.